Let's do this. Hello and welcome. Uh, today we're working on a simple fuzz pedal. And we've got a schematic here. I'm going to take this guy away. I did a little bit of uh, homework because there probably won't be enough time to wire this entire thing up if I hadn't done some of this beforehand. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go through my parts list here. All right. Got our case. I drilled some holes. We have an input and an output. We have a hot and a cold coming from each. We have a potentiometer. This is 100K. And I started some leads on there, a negative and two hots. That's gonna go in there. We have some resistors here. Looks like two 10Ks and a 100K. Might be hard to tell the difference, but you can see we've got brown, black, orange, that's 10K. couple capacitors. These are 10 microfarad. Look at our schematic real quick. You can see our 10K, our capacitors, another 10K, 10 microfarad. Uh, so you can use a 100K pot for this, or you can use a 100K resistor. We're going to use a pot today. And uh, a jumper between these two pins. This is our pinout for our chip. You can see you've got gain for one and eight, input hot and cold, ground, a bypass, voltage hot, and a voltage output, which is gonna be our signal output. So you can see I've done some of the homework here. Got a jumper between pins one and eight. We've got the battery coming in here. And uh, I put in a thing called a ground bus here. And that'll be our ground for the entire circuit. This is our socket. And these holes are specifically made to be a size that you can fit a resistor into. Or wires or components. Knob number one. Knob number two. Or knob number three. So, uh, you all get to choose which knob is going to be the knob. Here's number one again. Here's number two. Welcome, Joanna. Joanna says, uh, dinner disaster. Sorry, we're late. Welcome. I was just going over the knobs. I'm going to start over with the knobs. We did this last week. Here's knob number one. Here's knob number two. Pretty good. You recognize that one from last week too. Knob number three. This, this is just what the entire video is going to be. Me putting knobs in front of the camera. 
I, I'm especially proud of this knob. This is my favorite so far. Most pedals like this have a switch. Uh, this is a complex switch. This is a true bypass switch. We're not gonna use the switch today. <laughs> Joanna's already voted for number three. Josh, welcome. Josh also says number three. I, I wondered if this was gonna be like the uh, the big winner. All right, we'll see, we'll see. It's a long, it's gonna be a long hour, folks. There's a lot to do. Oh yeah, I'll set these up in the corner as we do in order. Oh, Casey for number two. Yeah, I thought Casey would like number two. Casey uh, has a uh, sensible aesthetic that is uh, industrial yet sensitive to design. Because, oh, I don't want to I don't want to spoil anything. This is, that's what we're looking at. All right. I was going over parts. We got a battery cable here. And a pop. Resistors, capacitors, these are our signal caps. You'll recognize these here. I'm just gonna catch everybody up real quick. These are the point twenty twos. Oh, not that one. That one and that one. That's three. Oh. And all right, I think, like I said, we we got started here a little bit. I already wired the uh, the battery jumper here, the gain jumper. And so what I've done here is I I installed a socket into this board. These boards are actually a nice way to make pedals because they'll fit right inside. And I've actually seen boutique pedal makers using sticky tape and literally just sticking these down. Uh, I would go for something a little more elegant, like uh, a standoff. Here's a standoff and a screw, but everybody makes, everyone makes pedals a little differently. Uh, as I was saying, I installed a socket here and a ground bus. We'll, we'll come back to the ground bus. Uh, I did not solder all the points to this socket yet. You can see a few are unsoldered. Here's where I, I, I uh, soldered the jumper in to pins one. Uh, pin two. You can see that pin, this is five, six, seven, eight. Pins um, six and seven are unsoldered yet. We'll get to that. So the reason I installed a socket is because these chips are static sensitive. Get a, a close up here. It's going to take one of these chips and if I fool around with these chips long enough, they'll simply die. If my fingers uh, short the wrong pins and there's any kind of static charge on my fingers, um, these chips, this, it'll be no good. Uh, and I've had that happen. One of the first chips that I ever purchased, which happened to be this package, the, uh, the LM386N. Uh, this was two of these chips and I killed one of them. So, this is what the uh, this is what the socket looks like. So we only need one, but I'm just showing you how they fit in. And this is a uh, it's no coincidence this, that this board fits these perfectly because this is like a standard slot sizing. So this is working. That's in the works. All right. We are going to get to work. We got our schematic. We got our parts. We got our caps. I made a few little jumpers here while we were while we were beginning. We may or may not need these. I suspect we will. And uh, hopefully in about an hour and 10 minutes, we will have a full working amp uh, 
guitar pedal. Crank this up a little bit. Some new music this week, thanks to Casey. Can you hear the music? Casey made good on his promise from uh, weeks past of sending me music to put on for the uh, for the show. So here it is. All right, to begin, we're just going to start here at uh, pin number two. Like I said, pin number one already jumped. Pin number two. We're going to do this input. So we've got in a 10k resistor going to pin number two. So I'm gonna fit my 10K resistor, black, orange, yellow. I'm gonna trim it a little bit, but I want it to sit in here like this, and I wanna leave, I wanna leave one or two pins on either side. So there's pin one, there's pin two. I wanna leave at least one pin so that I can fit the input wire from the jack onto here. And uh, we're gonna go just like that. So it looks like I can, Fit it. A lot of people will set these in like this and then just bend it over and that's that's fine. Don't do that. Um, I'm gonna leave this straight up and down though. No, I'll do I'll do it flat. Flat it out. But I am going to go right up to the socket. Okay, now I'm leaving a little extra on the back here because I want to make that joint like that. And then I'm going to trim off just a little bit. I'll come back to that. But I'm going to bend this. Oh, we're back to our uh, What's Made music. Bend this over like that. Everyone saw last week how uh, resilient resistor legs are, so I won't even I won't even mention it. But I will step back from the camera a bit. One, two. too much. Sometimes you have to pull leads from the bottom to get them to really come through. There we go. Okay, there's one. So like I said, I'm gonna bend this over and you see where I have to clip it. Okay, now I can just gently bend that over just a little. It gets, it gets blurry when it wants to. Uh... Okay, so that's making contact. Let's push that down a little bit. And then I'll set this over here and we'll clip that one as well. Okay. Resistor one installed. Pin number three. A 10 microfarad, now that's an electrolytic cap. So I'm using a um, 16 volt 10 microfarad. You can see here, 
that that's the negative side, and the un unmarked side is the positive side. So to pin three, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go positive to pin three, and then this can fold, this can either go above and short, which I think is probably what I'll do. Set this to the side. Like that. Right? And then this will just short right to the ground bus. If you missed that earlier, this is the ground bus. It goes to pin four. Every main thing Every main ground is going to go to pin four on this pedal, including the ground from the chassis. So that's going to be our chassis ground. I just installed a long thin wire that goes the length from there to there, pin four. And I'll solder all these bits onto here. Until then, what I like to do is put these in, fold them over. clip it. And then I'll come back inside of that in a moment. All right. One thing I will do though, I'm going to pull this under. Keep it in place. Pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four. Everybody feeling it? Back to work. Five. So pin five is going to be a 10K resistor heading to our potentiometer to a signal cap to the output. So why don't we start with this 10K resistor. Again, we're just going to start here. Okay, so you can see pin five in there. I'm gonna bend that over like that. Make sure it's straight on this side. And then we'll, we gotta get this in here before I do anything else. I'm gonna give it one or two little jumpers. So you could do this without this perf board, but it would be a little more complex. And uh, it's not, it doesn't work, it's not quite as quick to work that way. Um, you could use a turret strip or um, a turret board. And um, yeah, it's not quite as fast, but it's doable. Okay, like I said. So I only want to give this really one. It's going to jump one space. And uh, 
I sometimes keep these scraps around to use as jumpers for stuff like that. And if you look closely, you can see that I made a jumper here out of exactly this material. Jump. And that's going to be for pin seven coming up. All right. Back to the schematic. Uh, Casey asks, why are these sometimes called breadboards? Um, I don't know the specific name behind breadboard, but there are some types of boards that have um, a connected underside, like a strip. And essentially, this wire here that I created is called a bus. Um, some breadboards are all single buses for the entire length of the entire board. That way, when you make a connection from one side to another, it would automatically connect. And um, I th like I said, I'm not sure about the exact reason they're called breadboards, but this I would call a perf board. Uh, a breadboard would be something you could just plug into without soldering. And like I said, it would automatically be hooked up to each strip. Uh, whereas this one is simply just hole through plating, nothing is connected. You have to make the connections on the other side. So it would be a perf board full of buses. So like I said, a little bus there. All right. Point 0.22 cap and a jumper from this. We'll do the, we'll do the cap first. And then we'll get to soldering here. So I'm going to set this right in. Here's my point twenty two cap. I'm going to set this right in here. Right. That's automatically sitting there. I'll bend a pin bend it with my thumbnail, but I bet that's so short it cut my thumb. I'll push this with the back of a pair of pliers. And that'll actually make it a little easier to solder. Everybody stay inside today. Anybody do anything interesting? I said here, we're going to use this as our output. Uh, this works as an attenuator for the output. It'll basically send signal to ground, like I said, two hot wires and a cold wire. Casey said stood in the Stood in line for two hours to get groceries. Yeah, that's happening uh, a lot in New York City. I don't know if that's happening around the rest of the country. Um, I stood in line at the grocery store the other day and there are cones set up with signs on each, each of the cones that say, um, you know, uh, due to social distancing, please keep six feet between each person. So, um, yeah, I'm sure it's like, I'm sure it's a long line. All right. So like I said, this will shut um, signal to ground. It'll completely shut it off unless we put another resistor in, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. Uh, but this will go in in a moment and then we'll move on. Pin six, there's our jumper. So we have an electrolytic cap to ground and a hot wire. So this cap is basically part of the power supply so that it, it's like a battery that 
gives a reserve to the chip. And uh, like I said, this is the LM386 chip. Um, I'm using actually the LM386N1, which is about 325 milliwatts. I don't think it makes much difference. It, it does, it would be slightly louder if you were using this to design like a small um, guitar amp. 350, 325 milliwatts, 400 milliwatts is about half a watt, a third of a watt to a half a watt. So, um, which through a speaker could be quite a bit of volume. But what we've done is added this. Uh, Casey says, are they no NOS? These are not new old stock. I was, I was telling everybody earlier, this is the first chip I ever bought in a package like this. And I just happen to have kept it around because it's got this handy little pinout guide so that I know what all my pins are. So uh, the nice thing about these is four volts, 12 volts, uh, anywhere in between. You could run this on four, five, nine, 12 volts, very common voltages. Um, the drain, two milliamps, just like sitting, not working. Um, and then there are some, some ratings. I bought this in a Radio Shack in Astoria. Um, it was the first chip amp that I made. And uh, it turns out you can make a fuzz pedal out of it too. All right, lots to do, not a ton of time to do it. All right, we're gonna put this other capacitor in here. And like I said, we're gonna set this in here. We've got our negative side that's gonna go over to this bus. That's gonna be to the ground. So this is gonna go in here like this. And then I'm gonna run a jumper from here to here as a bus. Uh, Casey says, I think I remember that Radio Shack. Yeah, Casey lived in Astoria a little while before I lived in Astoria. Taylor made 85. That's Mike Taylor. Uh, says, how many of these have you made? Uh, I've made, of these particular amps, maybe a dozen of these amps. Uh, as a pedal, not a ton, but it's a great pedal to um, to work with. Like uh, It's a great chip to work with because it's a, um, a nice easy chip, very flexible as you saw, uh, decent decent power requirements, and it's a versatile guitar chip, so. Okay, still working. Like I said, I'm gonna put this in. That's gonna go under. I'm gonna mount this one upright, and we can see that my negative is there. Flip this over. I'm gonna bend it. I'll bend this over this way. I'll bend this this way. And then my next pin I'm leaving open for the hot wire. Bend this back this way. Leave a little room for a Ground bus, ground jumper. Okay. Moving on. Pin seven, point twenty two. Um, so this is a schematic, also, just, just so everybody knows. This is schematic, but I tend to draw my schematics. Um, in a similar fashion as what we would also call a layout. So you see that there's like a 10K resistor here. That's not necessarily the resistor um, symbol. Symbol for a resistor looks like this, right? And then it would say 10K. So what you see in a lot of CAD layouts now though 
is these essentially resistors looking like that. But I guess just to clarify, I'll go like that. So, capacitor here, our other signal cap. That's going to be pin seven, five, six, seven, eight. Set that little jumper there. You know what? I'm going to send this up like this to give us some room to work with here. Uh, so I said Mike just joined us. Mike, any... Um, have you been in a grocery store? Mike's in Michigan. Have you been in a grocery store in uh, in Michigan lately? And if so, were there any lines? says no he is not in any in any grocery stores okay I'm gonna start soldering just so that I have my components all set up and I have a bad a bad ending on that music and this is another Casey tune coming up Soldering iron, handy. And I'm not certain. Oh, I can. I can zoom in. So we're going to make this one a quick, a quick joint. In fact, I'm going to tape this down so that it doesn't move. Sometimes they, they will move as you solder. So tape that down. It's good to have some tape on hand. Take that off in a moment. He says extreme close up and uh, and gives us the center emoji, which I now know means solder. Okay, so this pin needs to. Just going through and hitting all those joints that I know I haven't hit yet. And also trying to hit the pad where it needs to be soldered, which is sometimes more tricky than it sounds. And it's definitely more tricky if you've got a video camera above. Get 
this guy from the side. I'm not trying not to burn myself. I've had three lucky weeks. Two lucky weeks, excuse me. Two lucky weeks and... Did I get it? Did I get the pad? All right. Now we, we need to double check that nothing shorted between pins that shouldn't have. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna put a little razor between here. This is the song that I wrote uh, in the style of how it's made that I think actually might be, it sounds so close. I just have to, I have to dig through a bunch of YouTube videos to see if it actually is a how it's made video song. It's so, it's so close. Okay. That looks good. That looks like flux. Oh, nope, that's a little stray wire. So this is good. That one wire could cause a lot of grief. So I'm gonna cut it off. And we're gonna get rid of it. Okay. One tiny little stray wire like that can cause uh, a whole bunch of problems. Okay, we've got our pins soldered. Maybe this guy. Maybe that one could use a little a little extra love, that is pin three. Casey says, I watched a vid today where the guy said solder is pronounced phonetically everywhere but the U.S. I guess that would be solder. I have never said solder. And I'm not about to start. All right. Uh, Casey also says, I'm not sure I've ever seen solder joints that magnified before. Yeah, it's a little like um, a close-up of like a haircut or or some embarrassing uh, skill set that could go could go horribly wrong. Okay, some more solder joints to make. didn't solder. We'll get here. We'll come back to this and we'll come back to this. Everything else is there. This is going to be our... Oh, we need a ground here. Okay, so I'm going to send some ground, some ground wires around. So we need a jumper from one half of here. We need a jumper from there, which we have. We need a jumper from here. And one from here. So this. That'll be my YouTube challenge. Uh, show your solder joints. I dare you. All right, I'm gonna tape that down. My 
tape. I get to use it. Rare. So we'll just jump this over. That won't be a problem. I would tend to put um, a ground bus on the bottom of the board, but I wanted everything to look concise, so I put this ground bus on top of the board so that it's easy to follow. In fact, we don't want it to get too hot. I'm just going to put a heat sink on that. Okay. Uh, that heat sink will keep that capacitor from basically melting inside. They're only, there's like a dielectric inside that is some kind of. Um, sticky gooey chemical that will melt at between 85 and 105 degrees depending on the capacitor so negative 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 ground 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 we need to get our pot installed so i've got two leads wired in here yesterday when i did this i believe i had the other lead uh, hooked to the other side here. We're going to try it both ways. We're going to try it without this lead hooked up, and then we're going to try it with this lead hooked up. I don't think we need both leads, um, but we'll check. So, 100k pot, one side going to ground, one side going to half of this. Yeah, 85 to 105 degree Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, it's a pro he says, Casey says, what if it's a, just a hot day? Well, they're rated to work for a while. Um, but the problem is, if you do live in a hot climate and your caps heat up an incredible amount, um, you're in trouble because the caps will eventually fail. They might not fail overnight. That's their rated, their rating, but um, eventually they will fail. And you'll be replacing caps. So it's especially important not to overheat your caps as you solder them. Speaking of solder, in case you really came through with these tunes, I would be uh, changing playlists now already. Otherwise, okay, I'm going to solder this one down here to the ground bus. And like I said, we'll come back and, and install that third joint if we need to.
Ooh, still hot. Okay. So this oven will go in there eventually. We need to hook up some power and our inputs outputs. Oh, we're getting close, folks. We're just about an hour in. So that's going to sit like this. This is going to be our input. And oh, uh, this will be fun. This is a song that I put together. I'm not going to call it a song. It's it's a a track. Uh, I'm back. We keep getting some uh, some connective connectivity issues. Okay. I don't know if the Wi-Fi is kicking me off. Hard to know. Okay, soldering in our input. Sometimes the tinning of these wires is like the thing that takes the longest. Um, tinning wires, stripping leads. So I actually spent the better part of the afternoon doing that stuff to make sure that these would go together fairly quickly. Again, black is going to go to ground. That's our ground bus. Josh asks, what to use for a camera for your videos? I actually use my um, my Galaxy S9, which has been uh, pretty nice so far. I did a shootout between the S9 and a Canon. 5D Mark III, and the footage wasn't exactly the same, but it was pretty crisp, considering. So, uh, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to argue with a camera that weighs a few ounces and auto auto zooms. Input. Yeah, I agree. It's it's um, a very clear. I, I actually I give streaming services a lot of props these days too because streaming on YouTube is extremely clear. Um, I've seen some Instagram and Facebook that has been very clear. Zoom is now all the rage, of course, very clear. Okay, output. From the back side of this, we're just gonna go like this. Oh, uh, so I was saying before the stream cut, this is a little jazz um, track I put together to send some videos to my mom and uh, they're very slow. I happened to come across them today, so I thought I'd drop them in. This is the same keyboard as the How It's Made stuff, so gives you an idea of uh, the power of that synthesizer and sort of auto bass playing. Okay, this is where things get a little tricky because you're kind of flying by wire here, I guess. I guess, pun intended, I, I, I guess.
output. And ground bus. Keep these coming from the same side. I usually would give these a little bit more length to wrap around that bus. And I also do like um, to use f straight copper. This is like silvered steel copper, um, which doesn't quite give as much um, electrical action as, as untreated copper, but very good. This is a funny joint. I'm gonna go for a little, a little better job. I've got my designer masking tape. Very important. Let it be the designer one. More solder is a little like uh, duct tape. It'll just fix it. Okay, back to work. All right. Input, output, our volume, power, we need power. Anyone, anyone who's ever owned a guitar pedal recognizes this. All right. Okay, stripped a little extra insulation off here in case we need it. Again, it's gonna go to ground. So I can't say enough about a either a good ground bus. Uh, if you're interested in making pedals, I would say look up, do, do a little bit of reading about grounding. Grounding is half of what electricity is. Uh, electricity is essentially electrons moving to or from ground or ground potential. So uh, that's how it flows. If you've ever seen lightning strike, lightning strikes to the ground, and sometimes you'll see lightning leaders coming up from the ground. So it's literally, it just means the ground. In this case, the ground happens to be whatever metal box uh, is pulling electrons to and fro. Okay, a solid connection. Oh, did I just do the wrong one? I did, I just added, added side of the wrong joint. You guys want that close up, right? That's why you're here. You came here just for that close up. You won't get it anywhere else but here, folks. Only on YouTube. Only on this channel. So do some reading about grounding. Grounding is important. There's a, a type of grounding called star grounding, 
which sort of looks the way it sounds. Bus grounding, which is what we're doing here today. Uh, and then there are other grounds, grounding systems that don't necessarily uh, have names, but can just be anywhere. You can ground to any point on the chassis. The problem is, or the, the chance you're taking, is that you could run into hum troubles, because if you have too many ground points, a hum could creep into your signal from the ground, ground loop. I'm gonna make this real quick. Where else, where else are you gonna get it? Cable here, some hookup wire. Is that going to be enough? Should be just enough. So, for pedals like this, you could use uh, lots of different kinds of wire. Um, I like a thinner gauge wire. You don't want it to be too thick because it'll be hard to maneuver on your board. This is a nice thin multi-strand cable. It's good probably up to about 100 volts. Wire does have ratings. That doesn't mean it, it would, anything would happen past 100 volts, but the insulation could start to break down on some wiring uh, past a certain voltage. Um, air is an insulator as well. I think air will insulate something up to 50 kilovolts, and then you start to see that Van de Graaff, is that the is that the term? The Van de Graaff machine, where the uh, the electricity starts flying around. Ooh, this is going to be not super pretty with the grounding above, but it'll work. keyboard. Josh, still in Michigan. Uh, have you have you been out much lately? You staying inside? You staying socially distanced?
Josh says, uh, my wife has to go out and about for her job, so if we need stuff from Meyer, she goes most often. Yep. Um, I think we're all, all really trying to, like, stay in for as long as possible to, uh, to keep things at bay. Tell her, uh, thank you for her service that she's providing. Pretty close here. We might have one more one more joint here. We'll, we'll experiment with that. But I see everything going. Input. Cap to ground. Number four is our gross bus ground. Our jumpers. Our other cap to ground. Pin six with the power and the capacitor, the power supply capacitor here, power here, 10k to our signal cap here, going out to there. So now I'm going to cover the bottom of this with some tape, just in case. So this will just isolate the board from the chassis. I'll just double check one more time that all my solder joints are there. Ooh, I see something here. Oh, that's our bus. Good. that joint but we'll come we'll come back and check if, if, uh, if we need to do any troubleshooting well we'll be suspect of that joint so covering the bottom here I set this in here Get our battery, get our inputs and our outputs. Almost time to mount our knob. We'll mount that after we check the uh, test to see if it works or not. Okay. on one side, just pulling it around. Plug it in. I label my nine volt batteries because sometimes I have one or two laying around and they go bad so quickly. You just have to make sure that they're new. Okay, we should be getting signal. Should be getting juice. Let's check to see if there's some guitar work in here. Is the see the tone knob? something.
Not much. I bet it has to do with our pot. Let's get that hooked up. Okay, that was a little test to see if we could get by without hooking up this last pot. Take our power off. Send this guy to here. Right there. Oh, huh. Uh, did anybody notice what I didn't do? What I haven't done yet? Probably the most important thing that I haven't. Besides the knob, of course. Do some silent soldering and I'll think about what I've done. Okay. And then I'll add a little jumper here. And we'll find out next time. Casey says, tell us what you forgot. I forgot to install the chip. The socket is empty. And now we all pay for my mistake by sitting awkwardly in silence. Uh, maybe, maybe everyone has some a second screen going home or uh, or some music happening. I'll, I'll just hope that that's the case. Okay, give this a clip. The most satisfying part, the chip. I will put some music on for that. right where we left off okay again static sensitive chips so ground yourself on something metal like a, a radiator or a sink pipe which I just grounded myself on a piece of on a big uh, tape machine that I have on the side here and that's our chip Still not going to grab the top, but you can see if you look closely, you can see a little dip in the front 
here. That indicates the uh, polarity of the chip. And you even see like a little, a little dot. It's a little hard to see. But if you look here, you'll see the same dip. And that means that the chip gets installed in that direction. I should do one side first. And eventually I do carefully as carefully as possible. Push it in. Okay. So that's our chip installed in the socket correctly. I'll edit that first round out. No one will ever know the difference. Okay. Let's test. This in the middle. We'll mount that in just a moment. And a drum roll. Should we take bets on whether it works or not? Oh, I hear buzz. So that's working. No troubleshooting necessary. This is going to be our, like I said, our output knob. It's going to be full. And that's going to go way down. We did it! And all we have to do now is install the knob. Oh, Harlow says, it sounds very nice. Thank you, Harlow. Get that knob installed. And I'll see if I can come up with a non copyrighted song to play before the end of the uh, before the end of the show. Get our knob music going. Perfect knob music. Knob installing music. Um, all right, this is it. I'm gonna go over the knobs one more time. Everybody gets to choose. Knob number one. Knob number two. Knob number three. That's a big one. All right. I'll leave that up to everybody at the moment. Some double sided stick tape on the back of this. Keep it in place for a moment. Casey says he's still set with number two. I'm going to turn this off so that it doesn't ground out or anything.
Harlow and Josh both vote for number three. I, I think number three is going to win it. Looks like Casey is currently the only vote for number two. Can that be? All right, let's see. I'm going to use the wrong tool for this job, but it'll work. All right. Fit or not fit, it's going to go there. Let me scroll up real quick and see uh, what we got. We got three, we got a two. Oh, Joanna said three. Hmm, I think three got it, folks. All right. Turn this all the way down. Do I have... a wrench to fit this. Let's find out. I hear uh, <laughs> some synth going on. Casey says this knob is enormous on here. And he is not wrong. Too big. Too big. Is that the one I just put down? A little too big. There it is. Okay. Starting at zero. Oh. I didn't even plan for it as a contingency. It just is going to sit off the edge. It's close. This is on you, folks. Josh says, nuclear knob of doom. Also, probably not wrong. Juice it! All right. Whew. It won't even sit up down, upside down. We're going to sticky tape that in place, too. new battery. Is it the best way to install a battery? I'm not going to say it's not. Here's the bottom of our case. Uh, I happened to paint it gold last week as I was testing out some gold paint. I think it's a nice look. I'm going to let it. I'll just put two of the screws in though. And see if I can think of a non copyrighted song or lick to play on guitar. I think I've got one. And we'll see how fuzzy this pedal gets. All right. Casey, thanks again for these tracks. Uh, that was more than generous and very appreciated. All right, Casey says, play some conversations slide. Let's try it. Did it glitch out on me? Are we still going? up in the interim. Nothing yet.
Oop, we may have to double check this. What happened? Something ground out. Troubleshooting. Uh, so this is a good lesson for pedal builders everywhere. No matter what you think, there can always be a little problem. Oh, I think I see the problem here. Not entirely uncommon. Uh, something is likely grounding out on the chassis here. I bet that was it. That was it. Yep, so that is called troubleshooting. There was trouble. We shot it. If only all pedal repair was so easy. Uh, what I meant to say was, all pedal repair is that easy. So, uh, you know, DIY. Like I said, this is going to get edited right out. It's going to look like I built the perfect pedal in like 25 minutes. All right, let me set the stage here. Do I have a guitar pick? I do. Do I have a guitar slide? I don't. So our our pedal is our knob is wired in backward. Folks, I think that's it. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Any questions before we go? Thanks again. Thanks for tuning in. If you didn't see last week's project, I finished it up here. The video goes up pretty soon. And uh, that's this, our Transformer DI box, our simple fuzz pedal. Will there be one next week? Sure. Uh, if people are interested, I'll, I'll keep doing this. And uh, who knows? Who knows what we'll do next week? But it'll be fun. And there's going to be lots of this. All right, everybody. Thanks for checking it out. I will see you all next week. Bye. Fixed. Fixed. Fixed.